Hey everyone, I'm Mark Morgan and today we're going to take a look at different phrasing techniques we can use to enhance our playing in the jazz style. I think the ultimate goal for any musician is to be able to mimic the way a vocalist would sing a line. There are quite a few techniques that we can incorporate into our playing to give our lines more of a singing quality. One of those is learning how to bend pitches. If you've never done this before, this is a great technique for not only adding interest to some of your lines, but it also helps you to maintain a steady airflow and maintain the center of the pitch. To start, hold out any note, let's say a middle G, and bend the note down until you land on the next partial, which is a low C. When I'm doing this, I'm thinking about keeping a steady stream of air and gradually opening my aperture, which is the opening in the lips. Once you become familiar with bending the pitch down, we need to bring it back up. This time, we're not going to go so far as to land on the low C, but instead, we're going to bend down just slightly to make the pitch go flat, then bring it back to the pitch we started on. Vibrato is one of the most commonly used techniques to add character and expression to a long note. Vibrato is adding vibration to the sound, which can be fast or slow by using either your hand or your jaw. It was very common for early jazz and swing musicians to use a faster vibrato, usually with the hand. Players like Harry James and Doc Severinsen typically use this type of vibrato. Bebop players like Chet Baker and Lee Morgan would use a slower vibrato with a jaw, which is typically the style that's used today. Whichever style you decide to go with, it needs to be used in the appropriate places. Not every note needs a vibrato, and deciding when to use it comes with experience. In fact, Miles Davis used it very little in his playing. When you do decide to use vibrato on a note, make sure that you establish the note first, then apply the vibrato towards the end. To get the effect of using vibrato with the hand, you are literally moving the horn to get the pitch to waver. Think about pulling the horn away while still maintaining contact with the lips. The pitch should slightly dip and go flat, then bring the horn back to its original position. Experiment with how fast and slow you can get the pitch to move. When using jaw vibrato, you're manipulating the aperture slightly by raising and lowering your jaw. You're not altering the pitch in the same way that you would with a pitch bend, but instead you're changing the pitch just enough to cause it to move. Now let's use the half valve technique. This is done by pushing the valve halfway down while you play a note. You need to keep the air steady and blow through the note to make it sound. You might need to experiment with how far you push the valve down to see which position gets you the best result. Pretty soon you won't even have to think about where that position is, you'll just start to go there naturally.
Miles Davis used this a lot in his soloing and it became part of his signature sound. He would use the half valve to create an effect of squeezing the notes out. Next, we're going to use a scoop. Scooping into a note can be done in two ways, bending the pitch with your lip or using a half valve. It involves starting on the flat side of the note, then coming up to the center of the pitch. Chad Baker was a fan of scooping into notes and would use these pretty frequently in his solos. Shakes and lip trills are used to move quickly between two partials. The players who used these most and probably the best were Louis Armstrong and Maynard Ferguson. Louis would use his hand to create a shake and Maynard would use his lip, or his tongue rather, to create a trill. Now, some people like to use the term shake and lip trill interchangeably, but I think there is a difference in the two and each had their specific purpose. Let's start with the lip trill. Simply put, this is slurring very quickly between two notes that are one partial away. For the common valve trill, you would start on a note and trill to the next half step or whole step above or below it. The lip trill moves to the next partial instead. Let's take G on top of the staff for instance. The next partial above that is a B flat. Start by holding the note and then slowly moving back and forth between the two partials. Once you get a feel for where each of these notes lie on the horn, start increasing the speed of the slur. Different people have different ways of achieving this. Some people like to think of moving between the two notes the same way you would as if you were whistling the two with a tongue. For me, I use my jaw and almost think of it as chewing the notes. The shake is achieved by literally shaking the horn. This gets more of an aggressive sound than the lip trill, and you can practice this the same way as the lip trill by starting on a G on top of the staff and gently pull the horn in slightly with your right hand to get up to the B flat and relax to go back down to the G. When you play in the upper register of the horn, the partials get closer together which makes it easier to do a shake or a trill. Falling off of a note is another common technique, and this can be done a few different ways as well. One way is to bend the pitch down in the same way we practice starting on a note and falling to the next partial, but instead of landing on that next partial, we let the note fall through the harmonic series. This way is usually done when we have a short or quick fall. We can also achieve a longer fall by using the half valve technique. The long fall actually incorporates the half valve and pitch bending. We want to give the illusion that the note is continuously sliding down.
It's important to remember that when you're falling off of a note, you need to actually play the note before you start the fall. The audience needs to be able to hear the note and the falling effect after. A smear is just like the name implies. You're smearing notes together as a way to connect two different notes. You do this with a half vowel technique, blowing through the note as you ascend or descend to the next note. A gliss is a long upward slide off of a note. You can do this a few different ways, with a half valve, playing chromatically, or sliding up through the harmonic series. A run is just a long and quick series of chromatic notes, usually going up to a note. Ghost notes are notes that are implied but not really played, or if they are played, they're usually swallowed up and not very audible. Typically you'll see parentheses around a note when it's intended for it to be a ghost note. A doit is the reverse of a quick fall. Instead of hitting the note and falling down, you play the note and quickly slide up. I've got to do the news! The turn or flip is not like a turn you would use in classical music. This is done more with the lip or half valve where the pitch moves up from one note and then down to the next. Grace notes are quick notes that precede another note. In classical music, you would want to play these notes as cleanly as possible. In jazz, we tend to be a little bit more lazy with the grace notes and sometimes, not always, play them a little longer. Growling and flutter tongue are actually two different techniques. A lot of young musicians think that these terms are interchangeable. When we growl a note, we're literally making a growling sound in the back of our throat. Some people like to think of this as humming while you're playing. In order to achieve this sound, you have to make sure that you're supporting your airstream and keeping it continuous. You can practice this by holding your hand in front of your face, blowing air, and trying to hum a note at the same time, like this. When you're humming, you should still feel the air against your hand. When we flutter tongue, we're allowing the tongue to move freely, or flutter, over a steady stream of air. 
You could practice this without the horn by blowing a steady stream of air and moving the tip of the tongue up to the hard palate of your gums and allowing it to flutter like this. Both of these techniques are typically used with a plunger mute, although that's not always the case. Wynton Marsalis will typically growl notes without a plunger, and Leroy Jones will use a flutter tongue in some of his lines. Cootie Williams and Bubber Miley, who both played in Duke Ellington's band, are some of the early players who made this technique popular. <laughs> Not all of these techniques will be used in every solo, and in fact, they shouldn't. The lines you're playing should dictate when and where to use them. Again, this comes from listening and experience in your playing. Let's listen to one of my favorite players, Kenny Rampton, use some of these techniques in his soloing. Guys, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content here, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button, and also leave me a comment in the section below letting me know how these techniques worked for you. Until next time, keep practicing, and I'll see you soon with another quick and easy trumpet tip.